All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about some platforming mechanics in Unity. I'm going to take a blank project like this, and I'm going to put some stuff in the scene, and I'm going to, you know, get a player moving around, the camera following, all that good stuff. So anytime you start a scene in Unity, you have the main camera here. For this video, we're not going to worry about too much about these settings down here. We will worry a little bit about its transform, but not for the moment. Uh, the only other thing with the project I've done is I've downloaded this sort of from the asset store, which you can access by going window, asset store. I've downloaded this free platformer game asset pack. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff in it, and it's really great if you just want to practice making a platformer or something. So for our, our game today, we're just going to drag some stuff in. So I'm going to drag some dirt in. This is what's great about Unity, right? Like, you can just drag stuff into the scene, and boom, there it is. And for my purposes, I don't really care if this looks good, so I'm just going to drag this out. I'm going to say, like, okay, that's that's the ground for my game for right now. Uh, and we're going to drag another piece of dirt in there. We're going to call that, like, a platform. So in Unity, you can just go up here and you can rename stuff. You can say ground, uh, rename, platform. Platform. Cool. And whenever you drag something into the scene in Unity that's just an image like this, it's going to have sprite renderer, you know, with the image. And you don't really need to worry about these settings for now. Uh, but yeah, and it's going to have a transform. All game objects in Unity have a transform to tell you their place in the world, their rotation in the world, their scale. Rotation uh, and scale are less useful right now. Obviously, I changed the scale of this one, but position is super useful if you create like a. Uh, empty game object in the world and we'll just move it around real quick. You can see the transform changes over here is the zero, your origin, zero, zero for X and Y. Just a basic coordinate plane system. For the Z portion, we don't need to worry about that too much in 2D. You know, you could change, you could look at this in 3D and you can change the Z position, but it's not really going to do much, right? So we're just keeping it 2D in this video. Cool, and let's get our player in there. We're not going to do much with our player either. He's just going to be a little body in the world. All right, let's put him right there. And we're going to rename it to player. Really easy. If you haven't used the Unity editor at all, or you used it very little, I think it's pretty intuitive if you just get in here and play around a bit, or uh, you'll probably figure some things out. Like I said, a lot of the Unity editor is just drag and drop, and if you ever want to do anything more complicated than that, you can usually just Google it. Um, in this video, anything I do, I'll explain, but we're really not going to get deep into this, because the whole point in this video is I want to show you just how simple it is to get started in Unity uh, with something like a platformer. Cool, so what are we going to do with the stuff that we've placed in our scene? Well, we're going to make it move, right? So in Unity, if you want to do any programming, you have to make a script. Everything's done through scripts. So we just make a new C-sharp script. I'm going to call this one movement, because that's what it's going to be for. And I'm just going to place it in the assets folder. We should probably do some better organization in like a real game because you can do whatever you want here, right? You can create like a folder and you could call it scripts or something like that. And you can put the scripts in the script folder. But for now, I'm not going to do anything like that because this project is going to be so small. It won't really be necessary. I also saved this scene by just going to, you know, save as as a test, test scene. That's not really relevant for now because we're not going to be switching scenes or anything like that. Uh, today, though, I would like to make a video about menus and scene switching and stuff, maybe score screens for like a platformer, because that kind of stuff is really simple in Unity too. Uh, and I think that like it would make for a good video all on its own. Uh, in any case, cool, so let's open this up. I'm just going to use Visual Studio here. And anytime you open up a script in Unity, you're going to get this sort of uh, basic little template here. Now you get your C sharp stuff which is your imports up here <clears throat> but instead of just using the standard collections library from C sharp we're also using the unity engine. Now what does this mean? Well it's going to give us access to all kinds of classes and utility things uh, 
that Unity has the Unity engine has built in that we can access, as you'll see in a moment. But you have your standard C sharp stuff. You made a class called Movement. It inherits from modern behavior. If you don't know much about inheritance or you're like a little bit shaky on it, you don't really need to know much for Unity. And that's kind of one of the great things about Unity because unless you're doing something rather sophisticated, you're not going to change this mono behavior thing all that often. You will sometimes in like a bigger project, but a lot of times you can get away with not knowing really much at all about inheritance and not having to worry about it. Uh, now start is exactly what it says. This method is going to be called only once and it's going to be called before the first frame of the game. And then update is going to be called every frame. If you're, you know, every game engine sort of has an underlying game loop and it runs at a certain amount of frames per second. And you know, the, the game loop is sort of locked to for a smooth performance. And uh, this update is sort of like the game loop, right? If you put something in here, then like 60 times per second, 60 frames per second, or whatever Unity is set to, that code's going to be running. So if you like instantiate an object in your world inside of here, uh, that's going to be a lot of objects really quickly. <laughs> but anyways, today we're not doing anything crazy like that. So public. What do we need here? We need reference to our player. So, and our player is a game object, so we're going to get a reference uh, as a game object, and we're going to call that player. Now, like I said, this game object is coming from uh, the Unity engine here. It knows what a game object is. It knows what this thing out here, this player is. It's a, just a game object in the world that has a transform and a sprite renderer in this case that we could have any number of components or, or very few components. I think it has to have a transform. I think every game object is required to have a transform. You might be able to delete it, actually. No, I think every game object is required. That's like the one thing that you just absolutely have to have for a game object in the world. Anyways, cool. We also need reference to our camera. This is how easy this is. Actually, we're going to call this cam. Uh, in any case, now Unity, you know, the Unity engine knows what a camera is. It's created this class for us to just use. We don't even know, have to know the underlying implementation of this class. We can just use it. And it's one of these cameras here. You can, I mean, you could even create more cameras in Unity. You could go to, yeah, you could just create another camera. <laughs> you would have to be doing something pretty sophisticated to want more than one camera, or at least pretty interesting. Uh, cool. So, and when you make something public in a Unity script, and then you attach that Unity script, drag and drop, to the object as a component. Scripts are a component. You could even go to add component, new script, and just like add a component from here. Uh, and it would appear in your assets. But instead, we are uh, just dragging and dropping this here. And then it just becomes a component, just like the transform, sprite renderer, anything like that. And then the component's going to sort of do, or the script's going to do sort of like whatever you tell it to, right? <clears throat> so, funny story, we, wouldn't even, we don't even have to attach this to the player. Uh, because we're making these public and then dragging the player in, you could just have like a blank game object with the script attached to it, and it would, it would still work, right? Because once you drag your player over here, then whatever this script does to this game object, it knows it's the player because you've literally dragged the player over here. By making it public, you've put it in the inspector and then you've told the game, okay, this game object is my player. So even if this game object held the script, which would make a lot of sense because the game object's not doing anything, the script would still work on the player because we would be dragging the player into this slot even if the script was on here, right? And, and that's how easy doing things in Unity is. So you really just need to put your scripts where it makes sense. Same thing with the camera. The this, this script doesn't have to be on the camera in order to do things with the camera, right? It can be on the player and still do things with the camera. Cool, so in start, we're gonna do nothing for now. And in update, we're gonna have a couple of different methods. We're gonna have a handle input method. This is gonna be input for the player. I'm just going to have Unity generate that for me, or have C Sharp, I guess, generate that for me. We're going to have another method to private void, and we're going to call this handle camera. The names of these is the names of these are basically arbitrary. 
I just like to have some sort of naming convention I follow, and handle is usually what I put in front of uh, stuff like that. So handle input for the player, handle the camera, you can call these whatever you want though. And then we're just gonna call them every single frame, right? So we're, every time the game loop runs, we're gonna be calling these, and uh, we're going to be checking for player input. So in Unity, checking for player input is really, really simple. In this sort of Unity engine, there's classes you can access for input, and it's just called the input class. And we're inside of that, we're gonna access get key, and then we're gonna enter a key code, which is just an enumeration uh, code that Unity has made for us. If you don't know much about enumerations, they're really easy. They're basically just constant variables that are put inside something called an enumeration. Uh, you can make an enum like this. Uh, things. And then you would put constants in here, right? Uh, and you could access the things, the key code, just like this, the key code sort of enumeration, the things enumeration, and get thing hang out of there or whatever. If you want to know more about enumerations, I just suggest you Google them. That was actually just a side point. That, that was more of like a tangent than anything. It's not really relevant for what we're doing. But cool, I'm accessing the input sort of class in the Unity engine, which we're using. We've, did, we've sort of uh, said that we're using that as is default with Unity scripts. And then when we press the key code D, when we press D on the keyboard, we're going to do something, right? Now there's get key and there's get key down. If you use get key, then if you press and hold the key, it'll just keep doing what's ever inside of here. Uh, whereas if you use get key down, it won't. It'll just get it once. But for movement in a platformer, you probably want constant smooth movement. So you're going to sort of use get key and not get key down. But that's the difference between those two. Now, what do we want to do? Well, we want our player to move, right? So we're going to access the game object, which is our player. Then we're going to access the transform through the dot operator. You just say dot transform. You could say dot sprite renderer. You could access any of these sort of, uh, well, actually, you'd probably have to get component for the sprite renderer. But the point is, is you can access any component that's on the player. Yeah, you would have to use get component, uh, which you'll see get component in a moment because we're going to do jumping in this video, but we're going to do it a little bit differently than we're doing uh, left and right movement. So we want to access the transform, and then we want to access the position specifically. We don't want to access the rotation. We don't want to access the scale. We're going to access the position. Now, what I'm going to show you in this video is what I think is the simplest way to do platformer movement. Now, I'm not going to declare that it is the best way, but it is what I think is a very simple way that works. So, and I think it's beginner friendly because it's easy to understand. Now, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make a public variable that's going to show up in the inspector, which this is the inspector. <clears throat> and I'm going to call it speed. It's going to be the speed at which our player moves. We don't need to declare it or anything because we'll be setting it out here. And then when we press D, we want to move in the positive X direction, right? So we want to move in the direction... Mm -hmm. We want to move in the direction this arrow is pointing. We want to move in the positive x direction. Let me go ahead and drag the main camera over here. Cool. So just like I said, now that script knows what camera we're talking about because we've dragged it over there. And the script doesn't even need to be on the camera in order to know that. And then we don't want to move it all in the up or down direction. And we don't want to move in the Z definitely because this is a 2D game. Though there are some things you could do with a 2D game in the Z direction that might be kind of interesting. Now, if we're not doing this, if we're instead pressing, actually, let's just copy paste this because we're programmers and we're lazy. If we're instead pressing the A key, I'm just gonna change this to the A key. Input is stupidly simple in Unity. We want to move in the negative X direction, right? So all we're gonna do here is boom. We just make that number negative. Cool. So let's see here. Set our speed to one. I'm not really sure if that's a good speed, but we'll set it to one. 
Woo! That was fast, boy. Man, that was fast. Alright, this is like <laughs> 0 0.2. Woo! There we go. Wow, we're already platforming, huh? Okay, you can play with these numbers to be whatever you want. So that's like the simplest version of moving back and forth, really. Now, how are we going to... Let's... I bet you're wondering why isn't our camera sort of following the player, right? We're actually going to handle that in a moment, but first we're going to do a little bit about jumping. So we're going to make a couple other things. We're going to make a public float. This is going to be uh, the jump force. So, and then we need a private bool is jumping. Now I've seen a lot of ways to do jumping in Unity, and uh, I think most of them are are not really complex. It's just I think that sometimes people can get a little bit convoluted when trying to understand how to do a jump mechanic in Unity. Because this is private, we have to set it, and we want it to be false to start out with because our character is not going to be jumping immediately when the game starts. But before we, I think the solution I'm going to propose today is like very simple and it only takes up about 10 lines of code or so, or maybe like more like five lines if you don't include the setting of these variables and stuff. Uh, anyways, but what we need to do first is we need to talk about uh, the player and sort of his place in the world in terms of sitting on the platform here, because if he jumps, he has to come back down to the platform, right? Uh, and he also has to know when he's back down on the platform. So we need to add some components here. Yep, all right. We need to add a box collider. And I want, I want, where is this rigid body? Okay, so what is box collider? And I'm gonna also add it to my ground here. We'll do the platform in a second. Physics 2D. This guy does not need a rigid body. He only needs a box collider. Physics 2D, same thing with the platform. Cool, so what is a box collider? Well, all it is is this little box around your player that allows it to collide with other things that have box colliders. So if two things have box colliders and they hit each other, they won't pass through each other, right? Because there's going to be a collision. And the good thing is, is Unity will allow us to read when there's a collision in order to sort of um, decide to do things when there's a collision, right? And the rigid body allows your character to be affected by gravity. So if we press play now, Actually, let me demonstrate this by taking the player. The player should fall down to the platform now. Right, and because the platform has a collider, the player sort of uh, stops when he hits there. Now, if the platform had no collider, the player would literally just fall through the floor sort of forever. All right, we're gonna start the player at the bottom though. So that's really all a box collider is. You don't need to be confused by a lot of this stuff. If you want to change the gravity scale, as in how intense the gravity is, you can totally do that uh, using this here. And the rest of the stuff is probably not something you want to mess with for right now. You know, it's for... You could do some pretty sophisticated stuff with you know, these box colliders and... Um, and rigid bodies, especially the rigid bodies in the physics system in the game, which is quite, a, or in the uh, engine, which is quite advanced. But we're not going to worry about that today. Like I said, this video is trying to keep it simple and show you a simple way of doing some some uh, platformer mechanics. Uh, you can adjust the size of the collider if you want, and the X and Y. I think the default size for this particular game is like pretty on point. If we go to the ground, it's pretty much outlined it exactly. Anyways, the good thing is though, now that the player has a collider and a rigid body, we can do some jump mechanics. So I'm going to say the space bar is my jump key. So if the player... <laughs> hmm. 
hit space once again, unity input, it's stupidly easy. Uh, then we want to do some player. We want to, this is where I was talking about we're going to use get component. What kind of component on the player do we want to get? We want to get rigid body 2D. We're just, that's it, that's all this is. We're getting the game object that is the player and we're getting its rigid body 2D. You have to put the parentheses at the end for that. And then in the rigid body 2D, we're going to access add force method. That's it. And we're just going to add force to this rigid body. Now, this takes a vector 2, as you can see. So we're going to put a new vector 2. We could uh, create this vector 2 up here and just put it in, but I, I think I'm just going to create it on the spot. And we don't want any force to be added in the x direction. We only want it to be added in the y direction, right? Because this is a jump and it's not movement forward. Now, you could use the rigid body to move uh, in the x direction, you know, forward and backwards, like uh, this way and that way. And that would be one way to simulate maybe more realistic movement. But I feel like for this video, I, I like this because it is so simple. And I think it's going to look pretty good, too, as you'll see in a second. Anyways, we're going to put jump force in there which we haven't decided what that is yet, and it might take a little playing around with. And then once he's jumping, we're going to set is jumping to true, right? So now the player can't uh, jump again. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, if the player, if it's set to true, when does it get set to false again? And that is where the collision detection with the box dividers is going to come in. So private void. Now, what is this method? I did not just write this method out of nowhere. This is a method that exists sort of in Unity's engine. Any game object sort of that this script is attached to is going to, is, this is going to detect collisions with that game object, right? So uh, you get this collision. What this really is, is this is the this collision, this is a little bit uh, misleading. They call it a collision 2D, but what this really is, is you. Get, this is the object that is colliding with the object that this uh, script is attached to. You, you, you'll see what I mean. It's gonna be much easier to understand once I write this out. So I'm gonna say like, okay. And you can change the name of this, by the way. It doesn't have to be named collision. Uh, collision, like game object. So, this collision, give me the game object that caused this collision that's hitting me. And then get its tag, and we'll do something with its tag here. I'll tell you. So, game objects can have a tag. You can see right now the player is untagged. So is the ground, but we're going to make a tag called ground. And then we're going to say once the player hits the ground, is jumping as false again. So I bet you're wondering, well, if this isn't called an update, how does the game know when this happens? Uh, it's magic? <laughs> not, not really. Like I said, this method is just a part of the Unity engine, and it watches for collisions where, uh, on the, in the script in which it's you know implemented. And basically, once it creates this collision object, which will, has a reference to the game object that caused the collision, and you can, and you can get its tag. If you want to know a little bit more about this process, there's like tons of Unity documentation on it. I, I know my explanation is a little bit convoluted, especially for somebody who doesn't work with like abstract code a lot. But that that's basically it. Because we've declared and implemented this method in this script, the object the script is attached to will basically uh, call this. So before it had nothing in it, so when it collided with something, this was still called, but nothing happened. But now it'll call this and something will actually happen because we've sort of implemented it, right? And like I said, this collision object has a reference to the game object that is colliding with the object the script is attached to. And we're just saying that if that tag is the ground, then is jumping is false. Now, how do you make a tag in Unity? You go to the tags, you get to add tag. Add, we're just going to call it ground, save, and then if we go to the ground, we'll just tag it as ground. So, 
are we done here? I think we may very well be done with the jumping mechanic already. It was that simple. And like I said, if you wanted to, you could use this add force for side to side movement also. And that might be a fun experiment on your end. Ugh, that movement is still too fast. Oh, we don't have any jump force yet, do we? Uh, and this number is going to be very strange because lots of times, depending on what your gravity scale is, 30,000 seems like a lot, right? But you might have to make this number obscenely high. And I think my player's side-to-side -side movement is still a little too high. So we're going to lower it down massively. Wow, okay, that was too much jump force. All right, let's just lower this down. Let's let's try like a thousand. You're gonna have to play with these numbers a little bit. All right, that's still too much. Ah, that's getting a little better. Look at that. My side-to-side -side movement is still crazy. Uh, cool, so let's make this like 6. And let's make this like 70. Yeah, let's make it like 50. Oof. You know what one problem is? This needs to be get key down because we do not want to hold the space bar to fly. We want to only be able to press it once. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's why I said the jump force has to be higher because before we were holding down space bar. Let's see if this is enough. Okay. <laughs> we're moving way too fast side to side. These numbers you're just gonna have to play with. And like I said, you can switch to using uh, add force for your side to side movement also which might make it a little more natural looking I need to let's try 0 0.3 here and uh, 200 here interesting Oh, we never added our condition here. Dur -dur -dur. We don't want to be able to jump and not is jumping. So if is jumping is false, and you know what? We'll just make that explicit. If it's false, if our player just is not jumping, you know, if is jumping is false, then uh, we don't want to be able to jump. Or no, 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 we want to be able to jump if it's false. We, we don't want to be able to jump if it's true. Cool. Oh boy. Like I said, we're going to have to play with these numbers. One of the hardest things about making... Okay, now we're sort of... We have a consistent jump. We can't double jump. I know the... Uh, Yeah, we have a consistent jump, we can't double jump. Cool, so that's like, you can play with these numbers forever and eventually, like, maybe you'll get something to like. I don't know. But, anyways, yeah, cool, so. Uh, that's basically how simple it is to get some platform mechanics you need. Now, obviously, if we want to be able to jump onto this platform, we're gonna have to jump uh, pretty significantly higher than that, but I think today for time's sake, I'm probably not going to play with the numbers until I can do that. Cool, so by the way, you're probably wondering to yourself, well, what's stopping our player just from going off the edge of the world, right? And falling into, let's look at that in scene view actually. What's stopping our player from sort of going off the edge of the world? and then falling out into nothing. Well, there's a couple different ways you could handle that. You could just simply put an invisible box collider here, 
and then your player would never be able to move beyond that. And you could also lock your camera's position to make sure, like, say you never want your camera. Actually, we're going to mess with the camera here in a second, so uh, there's no need for me to say that right now. But you could put an invisible box collider here, or you could just put dirt here with a collider that, that's high enough to where your player can't jump over, right? And then he would be locked into the arena that is this area. Uh, invisible box collider where at the edge of where the camera can move to is usually pretty good. Now as far as moving the camera with our player, so this is going to be really simple too. So we're going to say if the player's position, we don't want the camera to move uh, sort of further left than it already is, right? Because it's it's already at the edge of the screen. So we only want if the cam so we want the camera to stay where it is unless the player's position is greater than uh, oh wait dot x the x portion of the player's position is greater than or equal to zero. If that's true, whoops, not player. This time we need camera. If that's true, then we want the camera to follow the player, right? Transform that position, just like we access the player's position, we're accessing the cameras and we're setting it equal to a new vector three, which is just transform dot position dot x. There's, like I said, if you just got the transform as a variable, this would probably be a little bit more efficient. No, we don't want static camera, we want our camera. Oh, it's because I called it cam. That's right. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to. Oh, wait, actually, our camera's default position, Z position, is negative 10, so we probably want to keep it as that. And if you want it, the camera to follow the player when he drop, jumps, above a certain position, whoops, then you could change this to something like, uh, you know, player position dot y plus, you know, 2.7, then the camera will always be 2.7 units above the player, but its main center position here, but when the player jumps, the camera will also move up and down, or, or will always be that much above the player, so when the player moves up, the camera will also move up with him. But for now, I'm just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna have the player or the camera follow the player on the uh, X. Now, if you look at what happens here, now the camera follows the player, but does not follow the player once he gets to here. Right? So that's cool. Uh, and like I said, you could put an invisible collider or something there to stop the player moving past it. Now, what happens when you get to the edge of the screen on this side and you don't want the camera to move anymore? Well, you could just take this camera and you could say like, well, okay, we know once we get to here, we don't want to move anymore. You just take that X position. I'm gonna move my camera back real quick. But yeah, you just take that X position and you do kind of like the same thing you did here, right? If the player's X position, or well, you wouldn't take that X position. Oh, yeah, 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 you would. You would say if the player's X position, yeah, you would say as long as the player's X position is greater than zero, but less than that other maximum X position that the camera can be at, right? So that way the camera always stops following the player once he gets to the edge. Cool. I think that mostly covers everything for the camera. And we can do some more advanced stuff too. But I don't think that's probably a thing for this video. Anyways, this has been like an introduction to mechanics and platforming games. I think if I make another video, maybe I'll do something like item collection, some basic UI, maybe menus, something like that. Uh, this video is already around 35 minutes though. You know, tell me what you thought of this video, if you got something out of it. I know this video probably isn't for people who are already like experienced in Unity. I was just hoping to show in like a simple 
manner for sort of like someone starting out. Uh, how you how simple it is to get in and make games with Unity. Uh, and I know platformers are a popular topic, so that's the one I chose. If you want to see something else, let me know. Or I had thought about doing an Infinite Runner video, which would have similar mechanics, trying to do like a complete game in one video or something, though that video would have to move really fast and would probably end up being an hour long. But tell me what you thought of this. Tell me what you thought of the simple way in which I implemented uh, jump mechanics and movement. Ooh, one more thing. Sometimes you can get in an inconsistent jump, but there's actually a good way to sort of uh, prevent that. So if you put force mode, this is the last thing we do here because I just remembered at the end of the video. Force mode 2D dot impulse. That's going to keep your jump force consistent so that when you press the space bar, you're always jumping the same amount and you're not like jumping a little bit one time, then like a lot one time, depending on your player's position and stuff like that. I think that's more relevant when you use the rigid body for movement back and forth. Uh, but either way, if you ever do use the rigid body for left and right movement, this is probably going to be uh, necessary. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you next time.